Okay, so let's take a look at another illustration of how to use this exponential formula that we talked about in order to sort of see interest rates and actually something valuable. So here's an actual question. Suppose that you want to invest $100,000. This is sort of a happy scenario because you actually have $100,000. That's a good way to start. So you have $100,000 and you want to invest it in some account. Now let's suppose that six months from now you want to take a vacation and so you need an extra $2,000 to pay for the trip. So what you want to do is you want to take your $100,000 and you want to invest it in some account and let's suppose that that account will compound the rates monthly. So every month they'll compound. And you want to put it into this bank so that at the end of six months you'll have $102,000. So you start with $100,000, you're going to invest it in some account that's going to actually compound monthly. And the question is, well, what's the rate on that account? What does the rate have to be in order for you to have the $102,000 at the end of six months? OK, so where to begin? Well, the first place we want to begin is by taking a look at the formula that gives us this relationship. This is how much you're going to have in the account at the end of your time. So it's the future value. P is the present value, how much you put in now. R is the interest rate. M is the number of compounding times per a year, t is the number of years. So if we were to plug all the information in, let's see what happens. In this case, what we want is, at the end of the day, we want to have $102,000. And we know that should equal what we're going to put in now, which is $100,000 times 1 plus the rate. Well, we don't know what the rate is. That's our mission, is to find the rate. How much compounding do we have per year? Well, it's monthly, so that's 12. And how many times will we get compounded? Well, we're going to put it in for six months, right? And we're going to get basically, so that's half a year. And the number of compounding is 12. So that's 12 over uh, a half, which is six. Or you could think about it as six months, six compoundings. OK, so now I want to solve this for r. So actually, this is a polynomial in r. It's something r to the sixth year. So I'll be taking sixth roots at some point. I can divide both sides by the. Uh, 100,000, notice all those zeros go away, and I would just be left with 102 divided by 100 if I cancel all those three zeros. And that would equal 1 plus r over 12 all to the sixth. If I take sixth roots of both sides here, then what I would see is the sixth root of 102 over 100 and that would equal 1 plus r over 12. I want to solve for r, so I could bring that 1 over and make it a minus 1. And then I could multiply everything through by 12. So let me just take a look at those steps individually. Well, in fact, let me do that here first. So if I were to bring the 1 over, I'd see that r over 12 would equal the sixth root of 102 over 100 and then all minus 1. That's the minus 1 part. Now if I multiply through by 12, I'd see that r equals 12 times that thing. Sixth root 102 over 100 minus 1. And now you can just compute that on a, on a scientific calculator. And if you do that, you see 0 0.03967 stuff. So the rate is 0 0.03967, uh, which is 3.967% or so. So that's the rate that the bank would have to pay you in order for you to have $102,000 at the end of a half a year compounding uh, monthly if you invest $100,000. So you can start to see how to use this type of formula to actually resolve questions about interest rates and investments. And notice it is exponential because of that TM upstairs. OK, we'll take a look at more exponential stuff coming up next.